Okay. Hello everyone uh, to the second uh, morning session this Friday, last day of COPPA. So I'm very pleased to introduce the next presenter. I notice I'm going to face forward so that otherwise the mic breaks off. Okay, so the title of this talk is Stepping Ex Logical Relations for Countable Non-Determinism and Probabilistic uh, Choice. The authors are Alejandro Aguirre and Lars Pirkidal, and Alejandro is presenting. Please. Thanks. Can you hear me? In back? Good. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks for the introduction. This is John Burr with Lars Pirkidal. And I want to start by motivating a bit um, the difference between probabilities and non-determinism. Um, so for the purpose of this talk, um, probabilities is a tool that's introduced by the programmer to sampling commands. And this has many applications. So for instance, in uh, cryptography, it's used to ensure security of crypto protocols. Um, in algorithmic algorithms, you can use it to write randomized algorithms uh, that perform better than deterministic algorithms in some metrics. And in statistical modeling, you can use it to generate and study models. On the other hand, non-determinism is usually used to model some kind of uncertainty in the execution of your programs. So for instance, in concurrency, you can just do uh, model the scheduler that uses which thread uh, steps at its timestamp. Um, and for instance, you can also think of memory allocation to be a non deterministic operation because it depends on, on what the operating system decides to do. And you can also just do model some kind of external input. And moreover, uh, when you're using about probabilities, you are interested in improving some kind of quantitative property. For instance, the probability of termination. And when you're about non determinism, you want to reason about something qualitative, which is whether there exists or not some kind of uh, behavior that may make the program fail. And in this paper, we actually consider countable non determinism. And the reason for this is a behavior that arises uh, in the setting of fair uh, schedulers in concurrent settings. So if you consider this to uh, pieces of code. These are two threads that are running concurrently, and the thread on the left, it initializes a, a flag to false, it initializes a counter to zero, and then while the flag is true, it uh, samples a random number between one and three, and it increments the counter. And the program on the right, uh, it just sets the false first to true, and then uh, to false. So now, uh, if, if the scheduler is fair, this means that both executions, oh sorry, both instructions on the right will get executed eventually, which means that the loop uh, will be exited at some point, necessarily. But the number of iterations that loop, loop will take, uh, it's entirely non deterministic It depends on the scheduler. And it can, in fact, be any natural number. So in a sequential setting, this can be modeled by just a similar a countable non deterministic choice operator that we uh, take up with a question mark, and this uh, evaluates in one step to any natural number. Um, so in the uh, previous program, we can replace it by just assuming that we uh, initially some variable x non-deterministically to any natural number, and then this variable x will contain the number of iterations that the loop should take. So now, the question we we like to uh, answer in this work is how do we reason about contextual equivalence of higher order programs that combine both probabilistic and non deterministic choice? And this uh, combination is something that has been uh, well studied in the benedictional setting uh, and it's known to be tricky. And the reason for this is that uh, usually one can model probabilities with the distribution mona, uh, let's call it D. And one can model non deterministic with the power shell monad, let's call it P. And there's a uh, result by Orak and Winskel that's uh, it's pretty well known that uh, P composed with D is not a monad, which means that we cannot just combine these two effects uh, easily. And then there's some uh, solutions that have been proposed. Uh, so one can just uh, really combine the monads, uh, but in this case, you will lose the uh, distributive property of one over the other, so you cannot uh, rewrite the questions uh, by swapping the probabilistic and the non-deterministic choice. One can also consider something that is called the monad of index distribution that does compose well with the monad of 
uh, with the Barcelona. But then, uh, uh, probabilistic choice between two equal programs is not high important. And one kind of method something that is called the monotone complex set. That sort of behaves like you would expect the composition of P and D to behave. Uh, but it's defined directly instead of as a composition. And these models are fairly well understood, but um, I would argue that they are a bit hard to combine with other language features. So once one that tries to extend them to the hard order and try to uh, incorporate polymorphism or recursion to these models, then this becomes even trickier. So our solution to this is uh, we're going to employ step index logical relations. So I'm sure a lot of people in the room have seen step index logical relations before and have worked with them. And, um, well, as step index logical relations, they offer um, an alternative to the additional methods, the reasoning about programs. And they have been shown to scale up to fairly complex languages um, and effects, and they can be used to study other properties, such as um, strong normalization or um, observational equivalence. And the key idea in the case of contextual equivalence is that you just define inductively for every type so the pairs of programs of type two that are indistinguishable after n states. <laughs> and moreover, these logical relations have been used before to study both countable and non missing and probabilistic choice independently. So our contribution in this work uh, the main contribution is we define two notions of contextual equivalence for a system F that has been extended with recursive types, discrete probabilities, and countable non determinism. And we construct two logical, two step index logical relations to reason about them. And we actually show that they are, these uh, notions of equivalence are conservative extensions to the properties defined in the previous work I just mentioned. And we show how they connect to other scalar-based notions of contextual equivalence. Um, as some case studies, we studied algebra theory induced by these uh, notions of equivalence. And we study some implementations of skip list. OK, so let me move on to the language we consider. This is um, a fairly standard called the value system F that has been extended with a type uh, for isographic types and operator for something from random distributions uh, that we call RAN and a question map operator that denotes countable non deterministic choice. And the operational semantics are fairly simple. So you have your standard deterministic reductions, uh, such as Peter reductions, projections, and eliminations, and so on. And then the uh, probabilistic choice RAN. When it has an argument, a natural number, it reduces natural number n. It reduces with probability 1 over n to any natural number between 1 and n. And then uh, probabilistic choice reduces in one step to any natural number. OK, so now, in order to define uh, contextual equivalence, we need to define what context can observe from programs. And in this case, we propose two notions. The first one is something we call probabilistic main termination. And the reason behind the name is that it extends the notion of main termination that is used to study non-determinism. And the way we define it is through a fixed one operator uh, that we call phi, and it receives as an argument a function from expressions to the unit interval and an expression, and it returns something in the unit interval. So more than what this does is it um, evaluates the expression for one step, and then it evaluates f on this expression. Um, so if the expression is a value, we just return 1. We don't even evaluate uh, f. And otherwise, depending on what the current redex is, uh, we have three possibilities. So if the redex is just a deterministic reduction from e to e prime, then we just evaluate f on e prime. If the redex is a countable non deterministic choice, then we we take the sub of the evaluation of f on all possible continuations, which are all not one numbers. And if we have a probabilistic choice, then we just take the expected value of this of f evaluated on all the possible choices. And then one can define uh, the probability the, the probability of main termination as the least fixed point of this operator. 
since we are going to define a step in the theoretical relation, we actually need to define a step in the expression of this uh, probability of derivation. And this uh, just corresponds to unfolding the fixed point definition uh, n times. And due to Clinic's fixed point theorem, we can actually show that uh, the sub of the probability of termination in n steps over the natural numbers converges to the fixed point. And this is important because uh, when we find a vertical relation, we just need to, test, to take step in the out of the natural numbers, and this ensures that the recursion is going to be um, uh, sound with respect to contextual equivalence. Now, when one defines mass termination, there's only a small difference, which is that instead of taking the sub for uh, non termination one takes the pin. And this looks like a small change, but it actually makes it uh, a bit more difficult to deal with. So first, one can define uh, an analog state the probability of mass termination, and the step in this probability of mass termination by just um, taking the unfoldings of the operator. But it turns out that if you take the sub of the probability of, of the step in this probability of mass termination over the natural numbers, then in general this is going to be below the fixed point. So the solution to this um, is to step in this over the ordinal, which is something that has already been observed to be necessary for countable uh, number emission on its own. And, um, well, for the purpose of this talk, you don't really need to know what ordinals are. You just need to know that it's a way to, um, to keep it written after the natural numbers are cast already passed. So one starts uh, iterating the operator at zero, which is just returning what, whatever is in the argument. Then you can apply f to this, and you obtain f of 1, and you keep going. And then the sub over the natural numbers of this um, iterations of the operator, we just call it f omega. But since this is below the base point, then we can actually apply it to this and get anything. And we call this f of omega plus 1. And then so we can keep iterating. Um, and then um, for limit ordinals, which are the ordinals that are not successors, then we just take the sub of the applications of the operator for every um, limit ordinal below it, below them. And then uh, what one can show is that there exists an ordinal beta in the set of countable ordinals for which the fixed point interesting search points of the phi operations converge to the piston of phi. So in particular, we have that the probability of mass termination coincides with the sub over the um, countable ordinals of the probability of mass terminating in uh, beta steps, where beta is a countable ordinal. <laughs> and this means that we can take um, step indices out of the ordinals. OK, so now um, I'm going to define uh, contextual equivalence in our setting. And contextual equivalence is just a particular case of something called a type index relation. So type index relation uh, is just a relation between one type expressions of the same type uh, that, that is indexed by the type. So you can think of it as a set of tuples of the form E1, E2, TO, where E1 and E2 are what type expressions of type TO. And just for the purpose of this talk, I've simplified uh, the relation so that we don't have type in context or type variables, but of course this uh, generalizes uh, as usual. Now, in the case of uh, main termination, we're going to say that a relation R is main adequate if for any pair uh, E and E prime in the relation, then we have the probability of main termination of E is below or equal to the probability of main termination of E prime. And finally, we say that our relation is compatible if it's close under typing rules. So for instance, if we have F1 related to F2, and we have E1 related to E2, then if they are of the appropriate types, it must also be the case that F1 applied to E1 is related to F2 applied to E2. And now one can define um, first contextual refinement as the largest type in this relation that is reflexive, transitive, compatible, and adequate. This is 
after the standard definition, uh, that works for other effects by just changing the um, definition of adequacy. And then contextual equivalence uh, is defined as the symmetric closure of contextual refinement. So now this is fine, but this is a bit weird, right? Because you can't be reason about this. Um, and in fact, it's a, bit, it's a bit hard, and this is the reason why one introduces the correlations. Um, so in a nutshell, uh, the trick of the correlations, uh, or sorry, the construction of the correlations can be carried out in a series of steps. So first one defines for every type tau the value interpretation of tau, which uh, receives as an argument a natural number that is called the step index, and then returns a, a relation over values of type tau. And this is defined in type three both and then and top. And roughly the idea is that B1 and B2 are in the uh, interpretation of type 2 as the index n if B1 contextually refines B2 for n steps. And a second step, we're going to use by tonality to define the uh, interpretation of expressions. And then uh, we define something called logical refinement by closing the interpretation of expressions under these state indices. And finally, we're going to use uh, logical refinement to reason about uh, contextual refinement. And for this, we need to show that logical refinement is sound with respect to contextual refinement. And for this, it's enough to show that it is reflexive, transitive, compatible, and adequate. So now I will show the relational interpretation of types. And for the people who have seen this kind of uh, logical version before, you will see that this is not very surprising. Um, so the only thing that will change is how you interpret uh, expressions. But in general, you can reduce all logical relations. So you have that for uh, ground types, it's just equality. For uh, arrow types, you need to mark um, related values to related expressions. And for uh, recursive types, then you just require that um, the, uh, sorry, the unfoldings are inside the interpretation at lower state indices. Uh, so here all the, all the work is really done by the definition of the, the expression relation, which is done by fire tonality. And this is a very neat trick that uh, also works well with other effects, not just probability choice and countable norm definition. So the idea here is that you lift the relation from values to expressions in two steps. So in the first step, um, you lift it to the evaluation context. And here the idea is that they're going to say that two evaluation contexts are uh, equivalent under the context relation if for at step index n, if for any step index m equal or lower than n, and any pair of values uh, that are related at step index n. Whenever you evaluate um, the first value inside the first context for n steps, this is below the um, fixed point, so the absolute probability of termination of the second value on the second context. And then once we take limits over this, we're going to see that this actually shows that the, um, so the total termination probability of the first context and the first value is below the total termination probability of the second context with the second value. And on the second step, um, one repeats this trick to define a relation between closed expressions. So we say that two relations, two sorry, two expressions E and E prime uh, are related as state index n is for any pair of uh, evaluation context E and E prime. If the relation for context as state index n, the probability of uh, capital E with uh, lowercase e. Uh, terminating in n steps is below the total probability of termination of context uh, e prime with expression e prime. And finally, one defines the refinement uh, by closing the uh, relation for uh, expressions under all step indices. And then we can show that the refinement is made adequate, uh, which relies crucially on the fact that the fixed point. Uh, can be achieved, can be uh, reached exactly in 
uh, omega many steps. And then one proves something that is sometimes called the fundamental property, which is uh, that the local region is compatible, compatible. Uh, so therefore, this uses that the local region is inside the uh, contextual equivalence, or contextual equivalent, sorry. Uh, but in particular, one can show that they both coincide. And this is sometimes called the CIU theorem because it's proven by going through a certain relation uh, that's called the CIU relation. Um, but it's not very important for this stuff. Now, I will just show quickly the mass case. Um, so here the difference is that one is to take step indices over omega 1, the countable ordinals. And this, otherwise, it looks very similar to your standard uh, political relation. Um, but the difference is that for your recursive types, you need to consider a fair case uh, that corresponds to limit ordinals. But otherwise, uh, it works uh, in the same manner. Um, as an application uh, for local relations, we can actually show that uh, both are not both contextual uh, mass equivalence and contextual many equivalence satisfy uh, this equation of theory, which corresponds to the distributed combination of the equation of theories for probabilistic and for non deterministic choice. Here we just show the uh, binary choices, which can be encoded through the um, through the choices in the language. And I will just uh, conclude quickly. So uh, I have shown that uh, logical relations are an alternative to the intentional methods. Um, this gives you a very smooth combination, and it scales well to fairly uh, complex languages. And in the paper, um, we can also see that there's a relation to scalar notions of scalar based notions of equivalence. Um, we have some case studies. Um, so thanks for the attention. Uh, are there some questions? We have about three minutes. Okay, please. Um, uh, yeah, please. Um, there's one. Uh, I have a quick question when you talk about probability. Have I put this specific definition of this random? Could be like a probability distribution there, which analyzes that? Right, so in this part we just consider um, uniform distributions, uh, uniform discrete distributions. Um, you could extend this to any discrete distribution, and this would work equally nice. Um, if you want to do uh, continuous distributions, this is a bit harder. And there's some work that uh, deals with this, but I don't exactly know how to combine it with the countable non deterministic choice. Okay, there is another question, I think, Alan. Yeah, so it's an algebraic rule. And uh, so I was wondering if the only source of requiring ordinal induction is the fact that you've got the uh, mechanically um, infinite non deterministic choice. So if I, if I strip that out and replace it with point on non deterministic could I replay all of this without needing the ordinals? I don't know if you just because. Then it's that having sub and empty without max and min, and this version actually continues. So you can just get support, but just with the uh, natural numbers. Okay, so there's time for a last question. Um, yeah, it's uh, kind of just a very technical question. Um, I couldn't quite get from the presentation. Is, is it that omega 1 is the smallest possible ordinal that you, you need to use, or you just know it's good enough? I just said it's, it's good enough. I have uh, my conjecture is that it should be um, it should work fine if you just consider two bit double ordinals because this is uh, the case for just countable non determination. But that makes you know if, if one should have probably this uh, thing it is uh, farther than this ordinal. Okay, so let's thank Alejandro again.